Hello everyone. So my name is Sanjay and I am the consultant for mathematics research department of Bluebell School International. And uh, this video is about what exactly is learning and teaching of mathematics. Uh, mathematics as generally perceived in the common uh, understanding is perceived to be when a child can understand calculations or a child is able to do calculations faster. So I have posed these questions to a lot of parents and teachers and I want to find out what are their perceptions about it and the major thing that comes out is being good in calculations but that is a very limited view of what mathematics is about. So in this video we are going to take an example and traverse through all different skills that comprise the whole spectrum of mathematics. Uh, so we start with this. Uh, these are eight skills that I have listed here, but uh, these are not the only skills. There are many other, but these are more fundamental and can help us to understand the entirety of mathematics. So first is computation, which is about calculations uh, and different ways of calculations. Then we have visualization, representation, reasoning, uh, formulating and solving problems, estimation and approximation, modeling and finally communication. Now, as we can see, these are eight different skills. If we see percentage, uh, if we divide the whole idea or understanding of mathematics in terms of percentage, then if we give equal weightage to all of them, then computation is almost about 12 to 13 percent of this. So if we base our understanding only on calculations or computations, then we are only solving uh, 13 percent of maths. So that is a very, very limited view of maths. So going ahead, so this uh, let's get started with this example which can help us to understand what are various levels of understanding in maths as well. So now uh, we have taken an example, it's a very simple example. Uh, Amit has 15 oranges and 39 apples. How many fruits does he have? Seems to a very, be a very simple question and children are able to fluently do that. But through this question, I'm going to show you all these different skills that a child has to go through before uh, saying that the child has actually understood something about maths or is doing uh, mathematics thinking or mathematics reasoning. The first is understanding and mathematical modeling. In this case, the child has to first understand this whole process. What is happening? Who is this guy Amit? What is it does he have? He has 15 oranges and then 39 apples. Now the child has to make a mental visualization of uh, this entire thing or context happening. So for that uh, understanding, we use pictures. That is a part of visualization. So there can be pictures like this. So 15 oranges can be drawn like this. So we have got these. These are 15 oranges. And the child may visualize apples to be like this. This is one bag of 10 apples, then we have another bag of 10 apples, then we have another bag of 10 apples and we have 9 more apples that we have got. So this is the way in which a child is first visualizing or trying to understand the problem. There may be different ways in which the child is understanding this problem, but the very idea of what we are visualizing is so important. So it is important that we help children to make pictures. Uh, these pictures can be uh, more realistic ones or can be more suggestive ones. For example, in this one, I've used just a box, which is showing a 10. So I've used this idea of uh, this. And then after I've understood this basic process, what is happening and what is intended is how many fruits. Now here I have 15 oranges and here I have 39 apples. Now, oranges and apples are different things and cannot be added together. When can they be added together? When I convert them into equal units. For example, oranges and apples belong to the same category that is fruits. So we convert 15 oranges and 39 apples to 15 fruits and 39 fruits. So I'll remove this one. We'll take it up later. So 15 fruits plus 39 fruits. Now, this process of trying to uh, simulate or trying to uh, capture the real situation in a mathematical sentence uh, is called mathematical modeling. We are trying to uh, 
replicate the realistic situation in a mathematical sentence. So this 15 plus 39 is showing something about what is happening and what is intended here. So that's the first level of understanding. Here we saw two, three different processes happening. First was understanding problem for which we used visualization. Then after that, we are formulating a mathematical statement which is helping us to understand how we are going to proceed with that. This is called mathematical modeling. Now we are going to go to the other aspect of it, which is uh, estimation. I erase that. Now estimation is a very important skill, which we generally miss. We directly jump to solving problems. Uh, estimation as a skill has to be really uh, understood really well. So if I have 15 plus 39, the child can be given uh, situations like what do you expect your answer to be and in this situation the child should not be calculating or not be using pencil or paper to actually do formal calculations it's just an idea that we are forming that idea should not be unrealistic it should be reasonable for example uh, what can be a better estimate can 50 be a better estimate of this can 500 be a better estimate so children have to actually uh, reasonably sort out these differences. This seems to be a very unreasonable solution. This is more reasonable, more realistic. So if a child, when we give them these two options and saying, okay, which one of them is more possible? If a child is selecting this one, then that means the child has not understood the idea of what is intended. And even if children get answers like 500 something or something, they will not be baffled by those answers. Uh, because they have not formed that mental image that my answer to this cannot be such a big number. So that's the idea of estimation. So first step was understanding, then we went to modeling through visualization and then uh, we went to visualization, then modeling and finally to estimation. Now we are coming to computation. So the child has actually seen, oh, this seems to be a more reasonable solution. So I will not have answers like 500 or 200 or 300. Now let's get started. Immediately what is generally taught uh, is that you have this, you arrange them in columns and start adding them. 5 plus 9 is 4 and then carry over and then so the child learns this entire script. If the script is not learned well then the child is not able to perform calculations. In this some children also make mistakes like 5 plus 9 is 14 and 1 plus they don't carry this one here and 1 plus 3 is 4. So something wrong happened with the script and the child was not able to understand and get the final answer. These formal methods have to be taught later and even before solving these methods, the emphasis should be in uh, non-standard processes. For example, let's see in different ways how I can solve this 15 plus 39. There's one way, I have 15, I have 39. So look at the picture. I can take the one from here and bring it here and this becomes 10 and there I have 14. So this is what I'm doing. I'm writing this as 14 plus 1 plus 39 and I know that 39 and 1 will make a 40 and 40 and 14 will make a 54. So that is one way of finding that solution where I have taken that one try to put it in this because it becomes a simpler number to solve and I have got this answer. I'll, I'll get to another way. Let's take the same problem again. And in this problem, what we have is uh, 15 plus 39. What we can do is we can break this number as 10 plus 5 plus 30 plus 9. We can add a 10 and 30 first. It's easier and more convenient to do that. So this is 40 and 5 and 4 is 14. And I know that 40 and 10 gives me 50 and 50 and 4 is 54. So that's another way of solving this uh, same problem. So we can see that we are actually using the very idea of place value and the understanding of numbers to actually manipulate and do this problem. There can be other ways also. For example, I can also take this as 15. I can take a 5 from here and I will be left with 34. I make this as a 20. 20 plus 34. So 20 and 30 gives me 50. So 50 and 4 gives me again 54. If we see that there are so many different ways of arriving at that same answer and it is generally seen and it has been researched that children who can flexibly work with these methods and actually 
select these optimum strategies and break those numbers and see what are alternatives to adding are more fluent and uh, more co confident in their understanding of maths so such informal ways of breaking manipulating numbers trying to make tens trying to make uh, 20 and complete numbers is should be the first step in computation and for that a very good and strong understanding of the number and place value is really very uh, important once children have explored this to the core and they are very fluent then there can be more reasonable we can shift from those non-standard processes to more standard ones that we use generally which is writing 13 uh, 15 plus 39 and it is more uh, reasonable that now the child will be able to say this is a 5 and this is a 9 and when we add that we get a 14 so I write a 4 and this is a 10 it's very important that we insist that this is not a 1 this is a 10 a 10 and a 10 which 20 and 10 is 30 uh, 30 is 50 so 54 and we see that we while doing this we can relate it with the pictures and the child can have a much better understanding of this so this is the thing we started with understanding proceeded to estimation now computation which moved from non-standard ways to standard ways in the non-standard ways what we saw was that there was a lot of reasoning involved for example when i was doing 15 plus 39 can I convert this into 14 plus 40? We can ask children this question. Do you think this is same as this? Why do you think so? So children have to think about those reasons as to, oh, there is some similarity here. And uh, this is just one more and this is just one less. So maybe I have taken that one from here and put it in this 39 and that's how I've got a 40. So in these non-standard techniques, a lot of reasoning is also happening. And simultaneously, children are communicating what they are doing. They are expressing themselves. That is also an objective where children are articulating their thoughts in a more precise manner and more reasonably arguing why this is happening rather than saying because you are my teacher and you have told me so I have to agree to that. So that's one. So we have already moved to formal algorithm. So these are certain uh, uh, skills that we have taken. Finally, I have already discussed is about communication. Now, in mathematics, it's very important that we communicate what we have got. In communication, in general languages, uh, we can be like subjective, but in mathematics, we generally remain objective. For example, uh, there was a very funny example, like uh, a man saw the woman with a telescope. Now, interestingly, in this sentence, a man saw the woman with a telescope. We don't know who had the telescope, the man or the woman. Such sentences are very ambiguous statements. In mathematics, we focus on very precise statements which are non-ambiguous. So children have to communicate what they have got in ways which are non-ambiguous and moving slowly to more and more precision. In this one, the idea is to communicate the solution. So the child can say, oh, 15 fruits and 39 fruits makes it 54 fruits. So then they can write sentences about it and this communication helps them to understand that this is what I have got and it helps them to understand maths in a much deeper sense. So in this simple video, we saw that uh, mathematics is not just about calculations. It is about many other skills which are equally important and uh, going and helping child with all those skills is necessary for children to be confident in maths and for children to be taking maths in more realistic ways. So I hope that this video helped you in your understanding of how uh, mathematics should be taught and what maths is about. We'll come up with more such videos and uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you.